Hi, for a very, very, very long time I've wanted to tell you about these paints. Resin art looks pale in comparison. Well, yeah, yeah. I extremely love French company called Pebio. I use their acrylics, varnishes, once I used their fabric paint, by the way, I must get back to this point one day. I visited their museum in France, but that's a different story. And they have paints that, for some reason, quite a few people talk about among art creators on YouTube. Although these paints, or rather with these paints, you can literally do shock content. If they get into the hands of a person who knows how to draw, unlike me, using them, it's possible to create incredible things. But even if you're not really good at drawing, like me, you can still make wow things. I'm speaking about three types of paints. Pebio Moon, by the way, if to translate sounds pretty good in Russian, Pebio Prism and Pebio Vitrail, which is gloss paint. And together they make up the mixed media concept, a kind of art in which you can match these colors and create incredible things. This is how Prism looks like. The color palette is much larger, in fact. One day I hope to get more of these colors. And this type of paint gives such an effect. There are moon colors in the containers of the same volume, and there is a set of 12 small containers of different colors. And the vitrail paints, which I plan to try for stained glass in future. But for now, I will try them in combination with moon and prism paints. In order to better understand how these paints work, I decided not to limit myself with small blanks for pendants or rings and try to make a decorative plate for jewelry or any other small things on the bedside table and so on. I will use epoxy resin. I take my Epoxy Pro because it hardens in 24 hours instead of 48 and I really wanted to try these paints as soon as possible. Then I stir the resin in a silicone cup and pour it into the mold. It is nice to work with such a spout because nothing drains down on the outer side of the cup. I remove the bubbles from the corners, wipe the sticks and leave them to dry. And start to wait. Of course, I couldn't simply wait, so I took up the basis for jewelry. I'll take these colors for the first pendant. It was my huge mistake to shake them. Never do that. Instead, you can stir them. I saw that some people use plastic pipettes working with these paints, but I have some experience using them on perfumery, and it's quite problematic to clean the pipettes from paint. And if your paint starts to dry before you finish, well, throwing them away is not an option at all. So today I will use canapé sticks, which I found at home, and in future I will probably take syringes for large fillings. Because you can open them and easily wash inside, unlike these pipettes. I stir the paint in the bottle and pour it onto the workpiece. I don't really want to waste this paint, so first I return a couple of drops to the bottle and then I clean the stick with a napkin. And do the same with the other paints. Next, I began to mix this paint a little, but then I read, as always after I had already tried it, that you shouldn't do it. After some time, I made sure of this myself, because if you mix these paints together, they won't work as they should. I mean, you can move it a little bit, but not like I did in this pendant, because apparently some chemical bonds in the paint break, and it doesn't work as it should. 
For the ring, I took grey moon paint, green prism and the trail. It will be Slytherin ring. And again, I begin to stir them a lot, but I shouldn't have really done this. In the last pendant, I first poured a prism and then the moon colors. Before that, I did the opposite, first were the moon ones and then the prism, but this time it was prism and then moon. Have a look at what starts to happen. A few vitrail drops and… well, I couldn't help it but making a couple of strokes. The result I will show you at the end. The next day my decorative plate finally dried up, and at that moment I could experiment with the paints to the fullest. The steps were still the same – stir the paint and pour the paint. Here, as in the last pendant, I start with the prism. And look, while I pour the moon paints, the spots on the prism have already started to appear. Here I already knew that I shouldn't stir the paint too much, although I really, really wanted to do it. After that, what I did was covering the holes with a stick, and my need for stirring I compensated by tilting the plate from side to side. As you can see, the white trail paints add such colored, translucent veins, and it's so beautiful. And also, thanks to the white trails, the other paints, the moon and prism, became more liquid and flow better than before. But due to the fact that I moved them a lot, they didn't open as well as they could, but again, I realized it after a while. And here is the result. On the accessories, the paints didn't really show their best, because I stirred them too much, this is my mistake. But I'm so delighted with the plate. Later, I made another one, and here the paints managed to show their best in all their glory. I think you have already guessed why. Yeah, I didn't stir them. I also practiced on pendants. In one, I even allowed myself to add a little of glitter. As you can see, I didn't feel any of these pendants with resin. The point is that the paint sets in the first 15 or 30 minutes, depending on the layer, but then continues to dry for several more days. I read this information on the internet. Many thanks to the woman who wrote that post. I will leave the link in the description. And, of course, even if I read it, I still had to make sure of this myself. Well, in other words, I wanted to see what would happen if you poured the resin before this paint dried… yeah, dried up completely. Well, this is what will happen. I cast this pendant the next day after I applied the paint, and the paint shrunk and shriveled inside. And here, by the way, it can still be counted as a special effect, but at the same time it can ruin my plates. So I wait until a week has passed to protect the pattern with resin. I could film this process as well, but I still have to wait three days for the pendant to dry, because I decided to wait a week, and I don't want to risk these plates. I think that 99% of you perfectly understand how I would do this final layer or a dome on the jewel. 
I hope this video was interesting and useful for you, and I love you this much. Bye.